Hey folks, today I have the pleasure to host Mathieu Lamérez, product specialist at Databricks for the second time. The first time we talked about SQL Execution API, and if I'm not wrong, it was maybe one year and a half ago. Welcome back, Mathieu. Thank you, Seth. You gotta have me more often here. Yeah, I guess so. We have more things to, to present, and so stay, stay tuned. We're not gonna spoil anything. Just make sure to subscribe. This is the first time I'm asking you to do it, so do it. Lots of stuff for you. But today, and you got a full pack today, agenda. Exactly, we have packed agenda. So you're going to be talking first, I think, about the um, semantic layer. You're going to try to explain what's the what's the semantic layer, what's the purpose of using a semantic layer. Then we have a surprise for our viewers. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's, a, that's an interesting concept, semantic layer. Um, it's a concept that talked often in, in the context of data visualization and, and BI. But I think it's important maybe just go back a little bit on what the concept is. And I think it's the difference between data and information. And that's that's at the heart of the discussion because we have lots of data, especially coming in from Databricks and structured in a number of different tables in different ways. But being able to understand what the data means and how it can in, be interpreted in a business point of view is often a little bit difficult. Um, and maybe we can just start with a, just a very concrete example. Here at Databricks, we often look at revenue using the concept of ARR. What the hell does that mean? It simply means annual recurring revenue. But the question is, how do we calculate that? How do we go from our table where we have all of our billing, which is essentially our revenue, um, and we calculate our AR, which is AR essentially, essentially is the, the amount of revenue that we have on a monthly basis, that's usually calculated on a monthly basis, um, and then um, pushed on an annual basis, so sometimes 12. Pretty simple, but one, you have to know what that definition is. Um, it would be, wouldn't it be really interesting if it was already calculated for you so that you don't have to redo it every time? And, and that's, that's the importance, and that's that what we mean by the semantic layer. It's taking the data, transforming, transforming it, into something that is usable by the business, essentially by integrating business concepts through either the, usually the notion of, of measures so that they can be readily interpretable. Yeah, so if I understand well, to make sure is to unify the, the layer where we're gonna have the same, like using the same rules everywhere rather than having someone defining ARR, I don't know, as if taking the revenue divided by 12, for example, and someone else using the same nick naming, but with another definition. The goal is to unify and have to make sure that you are getting the same KPI as everyone, or you're not using something else. Yeah, and I think I think that's a very important one. It's the notion of governance, and that's why I think the notion of semantic layer gets more and more important. Having a shared governance around these definitions is something that's important. So it's not reinvented five times. Because, well, I could calculate the AR and, and just put it just as a column. But if no one knows where that data is and how it's being calculated, that, that, that's not very useful. I need to be able to find it. And, and that's why here at Databricks, the notion of semantic layer is something that we're integrating into our Unity catalog through the notion of metrics with the idea of to be able to centralize those definitions. And I think that's a, an important concept is the notion of centralization of definition and its governance so that it can be readily found, easily understood, um, maybe so, and also understand which are the elements which are reliable now. So that's why we have also notions of certification so that people can understand it. Um, and there's also a notion of performance to be able to make sure that, that uh, whenever we query it, it's, it's used um, it's it's used uh, in, in, in with the uh, performance. So what you're saying that Databricks is introducing its own semantic layer and tightly integrated with the uh, with Unity catalog. Introducing metrics, man. Okay, so that's, that's, that's what you call UC metrics. Exactly. So that's a new product. Not as a product, but at least a new functionality that we're introducing within Unity Catalog, which is called Metrics. And essentially, it's that capability of being able to define those business concepts within the catalog that can be used. So essentially, we're retaking, bringing in some of these notions of that we find oftentimes in visualization tools, but we're integrating into that catalog. So what is a metric? Essentially, a metric is a definition of measure. What is a measure? A measure is, is it's just a calculation that is being done on data and that is evaluated versus dimensions so very much what we're finding is the notion of cubing concepts so people who are used to old tools such as uh, analytic services or are used to, to working with uh, with tools such as power bi are very familiar with these with these different 
things. Essentially, we have a calculation, and then we'd want to be able to project it or calculate versus a notion of dimension, for example, AOR. That's how I calculate it. So it's my monthly revenue times 12. But sometimes I want to evaluate versus a number of different things. I want to evaluate versus notion of time. I want to potentially want to evaluate versus a notion of geography or where maybe another third dimension I want to look at is maybe in terms of organization. So the idea is to be able to structure all of these things so they can be easily used. And so a metric in, in UC, in, in, in data bricks, UC metrics will be structured around two different things. On one hand, you'll have your dimensions. We're saying where I want to be able to project these calculations and the calculations themselves, the measures. And this way, you don't have to reinvent them. It's already there to calculate, to, to be able to have these definitions for you. And we can also have a notion of certification so that it's been validated and people can I easily find these information so they can use it. Can you show me how I can define those metrics? Does it require like a very deep knowledge on SQL or just some basic functionalities that I can implement? That I... No, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, essentially, we're using YAML files to be able to do that. Uh, and I'll do a quick quick presentation. But I think it's what well, in, important thing is to show where we want to where we want to use it. So metrics are often defined usually in, in the context of, of dashboards, and we have that integrated within Databricks. So metrics can be used in dashboards, it can be used in Genie, it can be used in queries. Um, and, and, and the thing, that's, that's an important because it's important for the entire data lifecycle. When we're trying to start and transform the information, we need to have common definitions how we're going to do it. Uh, people often see it just on the side of the data consumption, but it's, I think it's also very relevant on the ETL side. Being able to have the standard way of being able to calculate um, AR or any other type of concept so that it can be prepared. Another place where we're seeing this to be very, very important is, for example, for machine learning, uh, especially for the notion of feature. Features. Yeah, understanding, well, bring these concepts into feature, feature preparation is something that's, that's pretty important. But to your question on how to prepare that, that's actually pretty, pretty, it's pretty simple to do. So maybe, maybe I can share, do it quick. That's what, about, that's what I was about to ask. Can you show us a demo how I can define my dimensions and uh, metrics yeah. and then maybe how to use them within, I don't know, dashboards or Genie? Absolutely. I will I'll show you exactly how, how, it's, how it's done here. The way, an interesting element, as, I, as we have discussed, metrics are a UC object. So they are governed centrally and identified within the concept of the central catalog. So how are they defined? So it's essentially it's a YAML file that we can see here where we look at a source. Optionally, we can put different filters on it globally. Maybe we need to join it here. So in my case here, I'm looking at a standard, the, the TPCH data set where I've got a number of different orders. But I want to have on top of the orders, I want to be able to join it with one of the dimensions with the customers so that I understand I have extra information, notion, for example, the notion of segments, so that I can do my joints on top of that. So I need to bring that in so I can join it with different uh, other different sources. And then here comes that definition part. So here I've got my dimensions. So in my case here, I've got market segments. So I want to understand it versus different different segments I have, versus different customers, the notion of a notion of time, and notion of a status and priority. So all these different dimensions are going to be the different elements on which I will want to evaluate my different calculations. And so that brings me to the notion of measures. So th this is where I want to evaluate them. And here is what I want to evaluate. And here I'll bring the number of calculations. That's where the concepts are being defined. So here I've got a number of different things. I can do just simple counts and, number, and fulfilled orders. So here it's basically, it's, it's a count with a filter. I can do distinct, I can do some. So essentially anything, any type of aggregation functions can be used with, with metrics. And an interesting thing also is you can also use something I find really window cool. in those window functions because those are usually often hard to understand and use in in SQL. It's, it's not that it's complex, but it, it it's it is not something that that can be used where it's usually used by um, your 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 average business user. This makes it a lot easier to use. So I can define those here, and once I have that. And I've defined this, this makes it very easy. So I've got all of those definitions which are ready to be used directly 
in Databricks. Now I can use those in different ways. So for example, let me just share this. For example, I can use them directly in SQL. So this is what, for example, here, this is the same metrics I had. So it makes it a lot easier to use. As I can see, I can- And to read also, because you no longer need to do aggregate by this, aggregate by this. You're just bringing those measures and that's it. So this, the SQL sentence is much easier to read also. It's a lot easier to use. It makes it a lot more legible. Here I've got, I've got my dimensions. I want to look at by month, segment, and status. And then here I've got all my different measures. And because I've given them a pretty easily understandable name, that's pretty easy to use. And then I just, uh, here I'm just doing a little, a little, uh, a little filter, but that, that, that's basically it. Now let's take a look at how we would look if I were to do it just in SQL, looking at that same source. It's a lot more complicated. So I was doing in here a number of different, a little bit of transformation on my, on, uh, on my months and uh, my, my, so I need to understand the underlying data. So that makes it a little bit more complicated. I need to understand how I want to transform these things. So these three things, those are my dimensions. And then underneath here, here are some of my different uh, measures that I have, and but that I don't that have them all because for example, if I want to do the total amount for previous months, that requires a window function that I probably have to do with CTE plus my function beneath it. Makes it a lot harder to use, a lot more complex. Whereas here, pretty easy. I say, I want to analyze this by month, segment, status. These are the dimensions. And here's what I want to calculate. And bam, you're ready to go. Yeah, it's it a lot easier. way easier. And shareable. Because everybody says, well, total revenue. Hey, that's how you calculate it. It's already there for you. So it's kind of big. It's, it's a trusted asset because, you know, you're 100% sure of the rule that has been used behind this measure. So, you know, if another someone is using the same metrics, you're 100% sure that you're sharing the same view and you're 100% sure. I think this is also something very important because I, I noticed in the past I was working with some teams, they were leveraging the same data, the same name of metrics, but not the same way of calculating this. And it was creating some frictions, like which one is the right one? Which one's the right one? Which one's the way to use? They both have the same name. How does it mean? And then also, then the worst part is when it gets, starts to get used into dashboards and two people are using two different dashboards have different numbers and they're like, I'm right. No, I'm right. No, I'm right. And it just a lot of confusion and i guess like with all those like metrics they can also easily be used to build for example charts or like to build dashboards like i don't know dashboards can highlight the total revenue by product or by segment or maybe by month and so for dashboards i see it will be very easy but what, what about uh, maybe jenny so the, essentially the idea is for it to be once I have it, so I can query in SQL, but the most in interesting thing is to use it in other places. So like you said, it's integrated into AI BI dashboards. So for example, here's this quick little dashboard that I created here. As you can see, I just, the only thing I've put here is my order metrics. So I've got all the uh, different things. And then I can create a whole bunch of different visualization directly on top of that. Now, as you can see, AI BI knows how to use these knows a proper syntax to be able to query this with the notion of that that keyword measure so it's it's pretty easy to use but what i find the coolest thing is not necessarily the dashboards um essentially it's it's the use within with genie because one of the things that sometimes we find with genie is that it's sometimes hard to describe to genie how to calculate this business concept and since genie is inherently a probabilistic engine Sometimes it will calculate things slightly differently. When we use metrics with Genie, we essentially tell it to look up how things should be calculated and just makes it a lot easier. And so, for example, I can, I can just give you an example. So here I've, I've created my, my Genie room just on top of my metrics. So I can see it here. And that's the only thing I've put in. Now, of course, as with all Genie rooms, it's really important to put descriptions because uh, that's how Genie knows how to use what, so what measure or what dimensions, because it's going to look up that metadata. But other than that, I don't really have much more to do because it will it will be able to look up those different dimensions, those are different measures 
based on that. Now, another really interesting and cool thing to do is that when we use metrics, Genie automatically calculates dictionaries. So it understands the data and the values that are applied within the dimensions to make it a lot easier. So that's a function that was added a few a few months back and it's already integrated when we when we do that with with the metrics you don't have to add calculate it's already there it, it just does, does it for you uh, so just for information for example if you are saying aggregate the product sold in in california for example it knows that rather than filtering by where a state equal to california it can be just used state equal to ca because exactly, it, yeah. It did, uh, it did like, let's say, infer the values you have there to know how to filter the data. While in the past, you had to like add those uh, reference as instructions saying, if I refer to California, then it's CA. If it's EMEA, if it's like Europe, it's going to be EMEA and so on. So now it's much easier, which means you no longer need to do a lot of manual tuning. Well, so here's an example of a, of a genie room that I've uh, that been using it to be able to keep it to to regulate these, these measures, as you can see, you can use it just as anything else. So for example, to be able to configure this, I just put my metrics here, my metrics view, and um, it will integrate all the data in here. That's in, what's interesting to hear here is actually to see here, as I've, I've, put anything, I've only put one object, which is my orders metric, but in the background, it's actually gonna look up a number of different tables. Remember how I put those joints in there? Um, and as you can see here, I've just got my, my different measures and my dimensions. As always, when using a genie rooms, it's important to have all the different descriptions set up because that's the metadata that's going to be used by genie to understand which metrics to use. So once I've done that, that's pretty easy to use. I can just use it just as well in any genie room and it will be able to select the right measures. And as you can see, what's really cool about it is that it gives Genie the ability to systematically always calculate the same in the same way. For example, total revenue, it's always going to come back to that total revenue measure. And that the calculation behind there is handled by the metrics view and not by Genie. So that makes it a lot more reliable. Um, and then you can just use it in, in the same way. So here I've, I've just one dimension, one measure. If I, I can go a little bit thing, I want to add the number of customers and number of orders. If I see here, so it adds a number of different measures. Um, the distinct customer is an interesting one because it's sometimes something that um, Genie has a little bit of difficulty to do, but it has to do with the way that things are in interpreted um, and usually requires specific instructions. Whereas here, when we talk about customers, we're looking at distinct customers because it's been defined within a measure, it's always going to be calculated the same way. And last but not least, we were talking about that notion of dictionary that was added so that it understands what values exist. And you can see here, that's exactly what it's being using here. Were all orders for October 1995 fulfilled? What the hell does fulfilled mean? Well, that's, that's very much a, a term, uh, a business term. That's nothing to do with SQL. But here it understands it because it knows how to use the right measure and the right value for that measure. Same thing here, if I added to, for example, I added how about uh, for June 1985 and give me a breakdown, it allows to be able to have un understand all that information and it uses those, those measures, I think. So it just makes it a lot more reliable. So that's an, a very interesting element. Uh, I think enhances also the power of uh, Genie uh, to make it a lot more um, It lot brings more it brings more reliability and it gives it certifications. Yeah, just makes it a lot easier to use. I didn't have to use the here. I've got the three tables here. I didn't have to just specify all the joints because the metric view does it for me. It calculates the dictionaries automatically and it makes the way Genie uses or calculates things a lot more predictive. So overall, much better user experience. Perfect. I think it's uh, crystal clear. Thank you so much, Mathieu, for this uh, getting started, let's say, demo with uh, UC metrics. And I guess see you for our next session. We won't be spoiling them about what, but stay tuned. I'll be, I'll be back very soon. Bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.